So in this video, we'll take on a topic that's been all over the financial headlines recently, and that is convertible bonds. According to the FT, record numbers of convertible bonds are being issued in Europe at the moment. So for this video, let's take a look at why and roughly how they work and give you some sort of jargon busting along the way. So what is a convertible? Sounds very glamorous. It's a hybrid instrument, to give it its rather nasty sounding technical term. It is a bond that can be switched later into shares. And certain things need to be specified up front. So one of them is uh, when the investor can make that conversion from an IOU, a bond, into shares. And the other one is the terms. So how many shares you get if you give up a bond and pick shares instead. But let's just wind back a bit and think about why in the current market lots and lots of these things might be being issued in particular by the likes of Spanish and Italian companies. Okay, well, what are the advantages um, of taking something which starts as an IOU issued by a company and later could become uh, typically ordinary voting shares in that same business? Okay, well, let's think about it from, let's say, the issuer's point of view, the company's point of view. Right? By basically offering something which starts as a bond and later could become shares, what the company is saying is, as an investor, I would like you to take a lower coupon rate on the bond I'm about to issue, because later I'm going to give you the chance to convert the bonds you're holding into shares, and if the share price is rising sharply, that'll be a winning option to exercise. Okay? So the company is thinking, presumably, if I give this IOU some way of being converted into shares, I can basically get away with a lower interest rate initially. That's good for the issuer. What's more, if the investor takes the option to convert bond into shares, I save myself having to write a check to buy back the bond, to redeem it in the normal way. Um, and also, by issuing bonds rather than shares right now, because both will raise money for the company, I don't dilute existing shareholders, and that's something that might make them nervous. So by issuing a convertible, I bring in debt rather than equity. So from an issuer's point of view, there are quite a lot of reasons why they might think about trying to, to sell convertible bonds instead of standard bonds or issuing shares. Now let's turn that around. So it's all very well for an issuer to say, well, I'm going to issue this thing and see if anyone wants to buy it. But who would buy it? Okay. Well, you've got institutional investors in the main rather than the likes of you and me, okay, um, buying these things and buying them quite enthusiastically. Now, why would that be? Well, from an investor's point of view, the lower coupon rate initially clearly isn't a good thing. Right? From an investor, you'd rather have higher interest income coming in. But the beauty of something that starts as a bond and could become shares is you're kind of hedging your bets. Okay, so uh, what I'm saying there is that if the company that you buy the IOU, the bond in, if its share price rises sharply, then you might take the option to switch out of bonds into shares. All right? However, should the market take a bit of a battering, all right? so should share prices not go up as you expected, all right? rather than taking the full hit from holding the shares, you've kind of hedged yourself because you've still got this IOU, potentially redeemable, and paying, all right, not the highest coupon in the market, but a steady coupon. All right? So, first point to take away, once you get the point of convertibles, if you like, is why are lots of them being issued and bought right now? Well, the issuers are thinking we can get away with this. Okay, we can issue debt, we can, we can refinance ourselves this way. And here's a point to note, why are institutions buying them? Well, maybe they're thinking, wow, you know, the stock markets um, have had a bit of a kick up recently. Okay, so in order to try, to try and sort of hedge our bets a little bit, so a little bit of nervousness creeping in here, maybe what we'll do is we will buy these things called convertibles, because that way we get some upside, if there is some more upside to come, but we're also kind of hedged, because we won't be holding shares which could plunge in value if there's a bit of a correction or a crash. We've got these IOUs instead. Okay, so there's the market for convertibles. Now, a couple of bits of jargon two or three bits of jargon for the kind of techies out there. First of all, if you're really interested in what a convertible bond actually is, technically it's a standard bond with a call option bolted onto it. All right, and do see my separate videos on what are bonds and what are options if you'd like to know more about that. Number two, a couple of bits of jargon you'll see scattered around the press in relation to convertibles. Number one, the conversion ratio. 
Okay. Typically, if I have, say, a thousand uh, dollars, for argument's sake, nominal, do you see my bonds video, this doesn't make a huge amount of sense, but if you've got a thousand dollars nominal, the conversion ratio is simply, what does that turn into if you switch from bonds to shares? So that might become 50 shares on conversion, okay? And from there, you can look at or work out the conversion price, not very difficult. If a thousand pound nominal becomes 50 shares, that suggests a price of $20. Now here's another piece of jargon. What if the current share price in the company you're thinking of switching your bonds into equities into is only $15? So current share price, CSP, is only $15. All right, well clearly you're not gonna convert yet. Be no point. You're not gonna switch something that's worth more and something that's worth less. All right, so another bit of jargon you'll hear banded around is uh, this thing called a conversion premium, various versions of it. But people will say, well, how far would the current share price have to rise to get me interested in switching from bonds to shares? And my maths isn't very difficult on this one. Current share price, $15. Implied conversion price, $20. I need the share price to come up of, you know, $5 before I'm gonna think about converting. Again, or another way of putting that, $5 as a percentage of $15 is about 33%. Okay, there's a couple of little bits of jargon in there. All right, um, now, something I won't cover in a lot of detail in this video, that would need another video, and do write in and let me know if you'd like to see that other video, is um, how you price these things. Okay, and to answer that question, um, frankly, you know, where there's not much risk of conversion, of people going from there to there as investors, uh, generally a convertible or be influenced heavily by the same factors that influence other bonds, namely other interest rates in the market, time to redemption, and so on. Okay? Uh, once you get in range of potential conversion, so once these prices get closer together, to be honest, uh, the bond will tend to sort of move um, in, in, in some way in, in, with the share price, if you like. It's heavily influenced by the underlying share price. And you might be thinking, um, what if the share price sort of you know, suddenly spikes and everyone converts? From the issuing company's point of view, isn't that a bit of a nightmare? You know, they've sort of written this blank check, if you like. Well, the way that the issuing company will get around that problem with someone, everyone queuing up and saying, oh yeah, give me, give me your shares, give me your shares, give me your shares, um, is they can build in, okay, uh, the company that is an option that allows them um, to buy back the bonds, to redeem them, like a compulsory redemption. So the company is not sort of faced with sort of a, this huge check should uh, the share price spike and everyone choose to convert. Uh, on top of that, usually you can only convert from there to there on certain specified dates, or indeed on a certain specified date. Okay, it's not just an open-ended arrangement. All right? So there it is, convertible bonds. You'll see them uh, mentioned quite a bit at the moment. Quite a lot of interest in the European market. There are reasons why companies issue them, and there are good reasons why institutions are buying them. And if you were a, an investor of a nervous disposition, you might say the fact that so many institutions are buying them is a sign that they're hedging their bets and wondering whether the market's kind of topping off right now. Okay. Now, before I go, I'd just like to mention uh, my service, Money Week Tutorials. Uh, that is where basically you can get uh, two or three things. Number one, you can get these videos delivered to your inbox direct. Uh, before they're released on YouTube. Uh, number two, you can get my free introductory video series. Uh, the topic this week is bonds, uh, since we're talking about convertible bonds. And uh, thirdly, you'll get a little bonus article. Okay, that'll come out on a weekly basis. That'll either be a quick or written description of a piece of current jargon, or it'll be one of my previous investment strategy research articles. And if that all sounds uh, of interest, then do feel free to go to www.moneyweek.com forward slash Tim Bonds. That's www.moneyweek.com forward slash Tim Bonds. And that last bit's all one word. I'll see you next week.